Hey everyone, I wanted to give you my spoiler-free reviews of the Justice League Snyder Cut. I've watched this now twice. The first time I watched it, I was actually in the middle of doing stuff, so I kind of had to split it into parts. And the second time, just a straight run-through. Here are my thoughts without giving any major things away. I loved, loved, loved this. It was so good. Obviously, I'm a DC fan. Something I never really thought about with a lot of Zack Snyder's films. For all the criticism he gets, there's one thing that he does better than anyone. He makes every moment feel epic. And this is no exception. Every character gets a moment to shine. I think everyone except for maybe Aquaman, but... In fairness, Aquaman's story is more fleshed out in, you know, the movie Aquaman. There's so much stuff that watching the Snyder Cut, and I even watched the Whedon original release, it's not even like night and day. It's like someone made a perfectly cooked meal that was crafted with the best ingredients, the best time, and just pure love for you to enjoy. And then you have... Someone telling you about a really well-cooked meal, and instead going out and getting McDonald's. That is the true parallel. You see, with the Whedon version, it's build up and build up and build up for nothing. With the Snyder Cut, it's build up, feels epic, and its conclusion to that build up is epic. So, one of the things I loved the most about it was they got rid of the stupid, cartoony jokes. Except from the flash but that's okay because he's a goofy character what really bugged the crap out of me about the whedon cut was the forced comedy like everyone making smart ass jokes like snide little comments like they do in the marvel universe i hate that the marvel universe does this that they turn every single serious point into a joke literally in endgame one of the biggest things I hated about it was half of the universe died. Like, died. And they were still cracking jokes. I'm like, are you kidding me? Half of the universe is dead and you're still making jokes. When is enough enough? But the Snyder Cut did that perfectly. It made everything feel big and epic, and it was. It had so much stuff in it that I realized why so many people wanted to see it. I realized so much passion behind making it, and I honestly, I get the criticism of the actor who played Cyborg, because Whedon did destroy him. He didn't have a character. He really didn't in the original version. He was just... A guy who was there for plot convenience. In the Snyder version, it goes into his backstory. It makes you feel for the guy. He feels more like a person. He actually got the seal of approval from Marv Wolfman, the writer of the original Teen Titans comic books that I love. This is Cyborg. This is not Cyborg. Now here are a few downsides to it. Obviously, the most egregious is the length. Yes, it is long. It is four hours and two minutes. So even if you remove the opening and closing credits, I'd still say it's about three hours and 50 minutes, give or take. But here's the one upside to that. It is spaced out into six segments, about 40 minutes each. There's literally things that say part one, two, part three, and I love that they did that because it actually feels like a comic book. A real comic book does not have every bit of action at the front, does not have every bit of drama, and is not one straight story. People forget, even when you buy a graphic novel, it is paced. It is chapter by chapter by chapter. It builds. And Snyder got it down. Perfect. It is a shame that this never came out in theaters. And there's apparently a petition to actually get it in theaters. And there will be like a 10 minute interval. And I'd pay to see it. It is that good. Again, the pacing does kind of throw people a lot off. And the time alone throws a lot of people off and goes, whoa, that's way too long. One of the other criticisms is that, yes, it is rated R. The reason why 
is because there are, I think, like three F-bombs. Uh, I believe they say the S-word twice, and there's quite a bit of blood. Not a huge amount, but quite a bit. And most of it is from the parademons. That goes into my next point. The reveal and showing of Darkseid. This felt cataclysmic. Those of us that are DC fans know how big Darkseid is. He is the DC equivalent of Thanos if Thanos didn't need the Infinity Gauntlet and didn't need the stones. Creepy. He's got this overwhelming, just nervous feeling around him. Steppenwolf is the main villain of the movie, and a lot of people gave the original flack and said he looks stupid by design. The design is slightly better, but not quite better. One of the other things I really enjoyed was the Whedon version was so bright. Like, too bright. To the point where if you watch any of the other DC live-action movies, Batman v Superman, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, all of them have a darker tint. And there's a reason for that. It's supposed to feel serious. It, it's, it's a darker, grittier version of the heroes that we know. And each of them are supposed to have that tone. The Whedon version throws that tone out the window. The Snyder version keeps the same tone. It seems epic and big. And there's a lot to go with this kind of feeling of reluctant hero, but it does it in a way that doesn't feel too forced. These are people, and they feel like people. The way they're written is actually genuine. And Bruce being unsure, a lot of other things changed. They explained what the mother boxes actually were. They actually delve into the history behind them. They go into this whole origin of apocalypse coming to Earth. And there's so much mythos behind it. It really does feel like world building. And that's one thing I hated about the original release of the Justice League. It didn't feel like world building. It felt like they were just rushing to get to an ending that didn't ever come. I would have loved to seen a sequel to this. I don't think it will ever come, but there are so many concepts in this that really, really just, I don't, I can't explain it. They just work. One of the things I read behind the scenes is that Snyder specifically wanted Superman to come back in the black suit as an homage to the death and return of Superman. The reason a lot of the reshoots were done in the Whedon version were because, according to him, comic book fans would not recognize Superman in the black super suit. And the marketing team said, yeah, they're right. Just put him in the red and blue. So a lot of the scenes happened because of that suit. And I find that hilarious considering, statistically speaking, one of the highest selling comic book issues of all time is the death of Superman. And the follow-up one also sold extremely well was the return of Superman. So it's funny that they try to explain, well, no one will get that one. That's like saying no one wants to see Venom in a movie. Yeah, that totally panned out for Spider-Man 3, didn't it? There's a lot of Easter egg characters I won't get into. There is a real sense of a shared universe, but not a forced shared universe. There's certain things that really just build and build and build, and they feel satisfying. I really, 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 really recommend seeing this. If you have the time, take time out of your day. Take a day just to watch it, a weekend, whatever. Just really watch it, and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I highly, highly, highly recommend watching it. Do you see the Snyder Cut? Are you going to see it? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you next time.